Good morning, everybody. Time for coffee with Rob. What's going on at the Olympics? The whole world's going crazy over the the uh, mockery of the Leonardo da Vinci painting, The Last Supper, which I think is a travesty and, and it's horrible. But um, just look at a few things. Number one, the world has always been crazy. People say we're in the last days. We are in the last days. We've been in the last days since the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we've been in the last days for 2,000 years. <clears throat> We're 2,000 years closer to Christ's return. And people are like, well, geez, it's never been this bad. I'm going to tell you, it's been worse, and it's probably going to get worse. Um, number one, remember, Saul dragged people from the church into prisons. Saul dragged people to their death before he was converted and became Paul. If you think about the time of Nero, he blamed the Christians for everything and even used their bodies as human torches to light the streets at night. So it's not getting any worse. It's been worse. It's been bad. Sodom and Gomorrah was so bad, God destroyed it. Uh, the times during Noah and Genesis 6 were so bad that the thoughts and intents of men's hearts were evil continually, and God had to destroy the earth with water. So has it been worse? Yes. Is it going to get worse? Probably. And that's what I believe, and I believe the Bible is very clear on that. Number two, um, entertainment, music, TVs, uh, the Hollywood, all that belongs to the devil. Ephesians 2, 2, he's the prince and power of the air. How do you get your music? How do you get your television signal? All through the air. How do you get your internet? Through the air. Uh, I actually learned that from an Amish guy a few years ago. He, I said, why don't you have TVs and radios? He says, because Ephesians 2, 2 says, Satan is the prince and power of the air. Therefore, we don't let the air into our homes with TVs and radios. I thought that was a pretty good point. I'd rather be a little discerning and still enjoy my music and just be mentally aware of the messages coming out and and uh, take the good and, and block out the bad, so to speak. But um, yeah, they take it to an extreme, which I think that's their decision. Hope they enjoy that. So as far as the church goes, I just try to think, um, what are we doing to change things? There are so many people complaining about, oh, this is happening or that's happening. And we get angry over immigration. We get angry over uh, this, this movement with the LBGT community. And I'm asking, what are you doing to change it? Uh, I think one of the things that I notice as a church and as a pastor is we alienate that community instead of embracing it. Now, I'm not saying compromise the, the biblical principles on that lifestyle, but why, why alienate that community when we can embrace it and love them? Uh, and in, to that community, I say, uh, do you, the world you're creating, and I wrote this down, um, if, if you sow mockery, you're going to reap it. Uh, I think Ronald Reagan said, what are you going to do if America fails? Where are you going to run? I'd say, God says he's not mocked. Uh, eventually you reap what you sow. And I would be careful with the pride because pride, you can get so caught up in what you're doing that you stop to look at the long-term effects of what you're doing. Do you want to live in the world you're creating? So I think we need to be careful there. So um, if you sow mockery, you reap it. If you sow a world of chaos where the foundational norms are removed, be sure you want to live in the world you're creating. So I think there needs to be a compromise there. I would never compromise the word of God, but we need to live on biblical principles. And if grace, if the church has run out, if Christians are discouraged, if the patriots quit fighting, who's going to fight for you? Who's going to stand up for you? Where are you going to run for grace, mercy, and love? But I think if you look at the Bible and it says God is not mocked, you will reap what you sow. The, the word there is mukaritso. It means turn up the nose at, sneer at, and show contempt for. I think that what bothers me is that God has given us a life, but we can choose to do what we do with that life. And mocking our, the, the giver of our life is, is a very dangerous thing. I don't think God's discouraged. I think he's angry at sin. I don't think he's discouraged. Uh, he's not worried. And I'll give you an example why that hit me when I was in Special Forces Unit in Florida. We were on a base called Camp Blanding. We're in World War II. They built barracks and streets and everything to facilitate training during World War II. I was doing a land nav uh, exercise down there and going through the woods, I stumbled upon a couple of streets and the streets were overgrown with grass. The trees had grown up and removed the concrete 
and the roads were essentially gone. The barracks that we used were destroyed. They had caved in. So God's not mocked. He's not, he's in total control. He's not discouraged. He's not worried when your time is over. Uh, nature just has a way of taking things back. And so we can fool ourselves into thinking we're doing something unique or monumental. And God says, no, nah, it's just going to go back the way I want it eventually. He'll change it all. He'll burn it down and he'll start all over if he has to. So just looking at that, he's not mocked. He's not worried. He's in complete control. So I want to get in such an uproar. I think the main thing for me with the Olympic event or the stunt that they pulled with uh, Da Vinci's Last Supper is what about the legitimate efforts of the athletes? To me, it just kind of broke my heart that there's people who have trained for four years to compete for a moment of glory. They get one shot at this. They train four years and then they come to another country to compete amongst other countries to see who's the best. That's their moment. And to take an event or a stunt like this and overshadow the legitimate efforts of those people who have shed blood, sweat, tears, money, resources, and family dedication to produce an athlete, to produce a product for this, this moment and to mock it and to overshadow it for a stunt like this is horrible. So I would say don't be discouraged. Don't be worried. My question to the world is what are you doing to change it? What are you doing to make it better um, before we do anything? So anyway, that's kind of the thing. I'm going to go a little longer today. Um, let me look at Revelation 16. Do I think it's going to get worse? Yeah, it's going to get worse. Revelation 16 says this. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat and cursed the name of God who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent. Is it going to get worse? So anybody that's preaching a message like, give your money to the church, it's going to get better. We're going to usher in Jesus' second coming. It's not going to happen. It's going to get worse. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne, and the kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pain. So they brought their judgment, God's judgment upon them, and then they cursed God and blamed him, cursed God and blamed him for the judgment they justly received. But they refused to repent. This is Revelation 16. And you can keep on going. He, they gather for Armageddon. They start to get bloodlust, bloodthirsty. They want this war to come on. Then it says in 17 of Revelation 16, the seventh angel poured out his bowl. And out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, it is done. In other words, God has had enough. It's over. And then just go down back, uh, to verse 19. Babylon the great gave up her cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. There's a come a time. God's going to have the final say so. When he says that's enough, I'm done. I can't, I'm not taking it any longer. Every island fled away. The mountains could not be found from the sky. Huge hailstones found, fell about 100 pounds each and fell upon men. And they cursed God. They blamed God for the judgment that they caused, brought upon themselves, and they received. And if you look at Romans 1, it's the same thing. If you desire a sinful life, God will eventually say, you can have it. But then, the, in Romans chapter 1, if you read the whole chapter, you'll see the results of what you sow. You will reap what you sow. So be careful what you're sowing. Sow love, you reap love. You sow hate, you reap hate. Sow towards judgment, you reap judgment. I say, stand strong in God. Make a difference. Be a good Christian. And sow the love, grace, and mercy of God to this world. And that's what you'll receive.